Hey, it's Angela from Angela Marie Me. Today I'm sharing how Brendan and I built our DIY garage cabinet. These cabinets are easy to make, they're budget friendly, and they look really good too. Also, I do have a full cut list and build plans for these on my blog, which is linked below the video in the description box. Let's get started. We moved into our home this past summer and the garage has been a mess ever since. The first step to getting organized and making progress on the rest of our house projects is to build garage cabinets for all of my tools and building supplies. For these cabinets, we're using 3 quarter inch thick maple plywood that's formaldehyde free. I will link it below this video. The first step is to make the initial lumber cuts. We had our local home improvement store make some of our plywood cuts for the cabinet. Then we made the rest of our cuts with a circular saw and straight edge guide. Again, you can get the full cut list on my blog linked below this video. The next step is to add pocket holes with a Craig jig to the plywood for easily assembly of the cabinet box frame. The frame of the cabinet is actually called the carcass, but I never liked that term, so I'm going to use the term cabinet frame for this video. I began building the frame by attaching the top plywood board to one of the sides with wood glue and crank screws. Then I added the other side. A right angle clamp really helps with these steps. Before attaching the bottom board, I realized that we drilled one of the pocket holes for attaching our face frame too low and the bottom plywood board was going to cover it up. So Brandon re-drilled the hole higher up on the board. This will make much more sense when we get to the face frame step. The bottom plywood board has to be attached 3 quarters of an inch up from the bottom of the sides so that it will align with the top of our face frame board. We placed our back support boards in place to help hold everything together while clamping. After I attached the bottom of the cabinet, I installed the back support boards. These boards help to hold everything together and will be used for screwing the cabinet into the wall studs. All right, now that our cabinet box is assembled, at this point, if we wanted to cover the crank holes, we could put like a quarter inch backing board here, which I've done on other cabinet builds. But because these are garage cabinets, it doesn't really bother me, so I'm just gonna move forward at this point. The next step is going to be to build our face frame, which is going to cover the plywood edges, and then we can build our doors. For the face frame construction, we're using premium 1x2s. I used wood glue and pocket holes again for attaching them together. going to be using pocket holes to attach the base frame to the cabinet for an extra strong connection since our door hinges will be attached to the base frame. The pocket holes will be visible when the cabinet is open, but this doesn't really bother me since the holes are on the inside and they're garage cabinets. If these holes do bother you, you can always fill them or you could just attach the face frame with wood glue and nails instead of pocket holes. Another option is if you have cabinets going side by side to each other, you could put the crank holes on the outside of the plywood. It's time to build the cabinet doors. We're making a face frame style door with a half inch overlay. The face frame gives these cabinets a higher end look with a shaker style door instead of just using a plain slab of plywood. But they're still easy to make with no special cuts based on the method I'm using. I am assembling the cabinet door frame the same way as the face frame.
The next tip is to drill the holes for our door hinges. Brandon used our Craig Concealed Hinge Jig for this, which makes it super easy. The last step for the doors is to attach quarter inch backing plywood board with screws. This method makes building these doors super quick and easy. There are many other ways to build doors like using pocket holes and half inch plywood or using a router for a really professional looking door, but because these are garage cabinets, I went with this method. It's really great for beginners and again, it's just super quick and easy. The end result is a beautiful shaker style door. I can't wait to see what everything looks like painted. But first, we are going to build a matching second cabinet. At this point, Brandon took over with the cabinets by priming everything. We painted the cabinet with two coats of Dorian Gray by Sherwin Williams. Before hanging the cabinets on the wall, Brandon drilled shelf pin holes using another jig by Craig, which helped make this step really easy. I will link this jig below as well as all of the other jigs and tools that we used in this tutorial. Now that our cabinets are all painted, we can go ahead and get them installed on the wall. We're going to hang them the standard height from the floor for hanging cabinets, which is 54 inches. And we're gonna use this little hack of using a two by four installed on the wall. First, it really helps to keep everything level while you're holding up the cabinets and screwing them into the wall studs. We did this for our DIY wall cabinets in our laundry room and it worked really well. It is time to install our doors on the cabinets. We're going to be using European style hinges, which are awesome because they're totally adjustable once they're up on the cabinet, and that way you can have like the perfect gap and placement of them. These are a soft close hinge, and they have a half inch overlay, so that means the doors are going to sit about a half inch over on the face frame. And because these are face frame hinges, that means that they're going to get attached right to the inside frame of the door. I'm going to be using a self-centering drill bit to pre-drill the screw holes so that the holes are totally centered and nothing is off. And then Brennan's gonna help me attach them to the face frame. After installing the hinges on the door, these little metal grippers that are used to help hold them in place on the face frame, they were rubbing on the very edge of the door. So we just had to adjust the door depth a little bit with these hinges, which is this back screw, and that took care of it. Okay, so we're going to install the bracket onto the face frame, making sure that the door has a half inch overlay on the bottom and side of the face frame and the hinge brackets have these little metal hooks on them to help grip it on the face frame and hold it in place. shelves we're just using some leftover three quarter inch thick plywood and we cut them an eighth inch smaller than the width of the opening of the cabinet. And now the last tip is to drill the holes for the knob.
I am really loving how our garage cabinets turned out. I can't wait to start filling them with things and getting our garage more organized. The next project for this space is going to be building a DIY pegboard to put in between the cabinets. So make sure to subscribe and turn those notifications on so you don't miss any of those fun videos. If you're interested in more DIY cabinet ideas, make sure to check out our wall cabinet video from our laundry room makeover and also our built-in cabinet from our entryway makeover. Thank you so much for watching.